Every fall, 60 law students from American University's Washington College of Law leave their campus and go to a public high school in Washington, D.C. or Maryland to teach a course in constitutional literacy. New Channel 8's Julie McGraw shows us how students are exercising their right to learn. It's students teaching students at Dell Multicultural High School. American University law students are teaching kids about the Constitution and about rights they never knew they had. We started off uh, small. We sent 25 law students into some public high schools. And uh, then we started getting calls from high schools saying, hey, we want the same thing. And originally, people thought that the schools wouldn't be able to handle it. In fact, one principal even said to me, wait a second, you want to send law students into my high school to teach my students about their constitutional rights? You know? And we said, yeah, that's what we want to do, but we want to teach about rights and responsibilities together. Today, the Marshall Brennan Program at AU sends out 60 law students a year to 20 different high schools. We the Students course is organized around Supreme Court cases that affect the rights and responsibilities of America's high school and junior high school students. We use the school itself as the text for teaching about the Supreme Court and about the Constitution. Changes everything. This means that the police do not need probable cause to seize you. The police could tell you you're standing right here, you don't go anywhere, and you have to stay based on just reasonable suspicion. Before this case, that would have been a seizure if they didn't have probable cause, and everything that they had would have been thrown out, right? I was watching the news yesterday about, um, you know, teenagers, uh, especially um, boys who are wearing baggy pants and everything, cops going to have probable cause to arrest them because they might conceal a, a weapon or something because of the violent gangs around D.C. And my mother was like, you know, they're going to arrest you because you're wearing baggy pants, so you stop, you better stop, you better put a bell on or something. <laughs> I was like, man, I know my rights. See, I like to learn by having fun and learning at the same time, and that's what they provide me in the class. Recently, we just got over the unit with searches and seizures and how they're different for when you're in school and you're out of school. So it's cool to understand about how it affects you personally. I learned that we have more rights as people in the United States than we think because um, even the police have to answer up to a certain power. The fact that students at a, at a young age 16, 17, are learning their rights, um, not from law and order and or mislearning them from TV. They're actually learning what the law is and the law that they're presumed to know as they leave high school. And a lot of the inner city kids, you know, either because they're engaged in some misconduct or they're not, um, they're going to come in contact with law enforcement or family members will come in contact with law enforcement. That's the reality. We're creating a kind of sequel or a, a sort of analog to the students that's called youth justice. And it's for those kids who end up getting channeled not so much through the educational system, but through the criminal justice system. Many schools now offer the full year course, with the fall semester focusing on the Constitution in schools, and the second on the rights of juveniles in the criminal justice system. The Marshall Brennan experience now extends far beyond the classroom. If there's somebody you can practice with tonight, a friend or a family member, somebody you can just do your argument in front of and have them, you know, sort of ask you questions. The law students coach their students in the Metropolitan-wide Karchmer High School Moot Court Competition, the only appellate constitutional law competition for high school students in the country.
The issue in this case is whether executing juvenile murderers of ages 16 and 17 violates the Eighth Amendment's ban on cruel and unusual punishment. The execution of juvenile offenders violates the Eighth Amendment because it is disproportionate to their criminal possibility. Mr. Jones is capable of attacking the community with bullets. He went to the demonstration and shot 15 rounds, killing a principal in the head, and then shooting two others. My opponent stated that Derek Jones should be made an example of him because or deterred for, for kids not to commit crimes. Is that really what the United States is about, setting examples for other people? How do you answer to the scientific evidence that says that juveniles lack the sort of impulse control that would have any sort of deterrent effect that they don't really think before they act? And no, you said it's impulse control. But clearly, Derek Jones presented it. It's not a crime of passion. You don't have the right to vote. You don't have certain privileges as adults. So why should you give a child the same punishment as you would give an adult? You don't see them as adults any other time, but when it's time to punish. I told the, the competitors that we're here to raise their expectations of themselves. We're here to let them know that they don't have to underestimate themselves. As far as explaining to all, um, no, I, I, I think it's sort of like a, like a joke, but then I started getting into the moot court uh, competition, and then I realized maybe I had an act with it. So, uh, you know, I feel like I'm working through it now. I'm here, um, and I feel pretty confident that I can make it to the next round. Why shouldn't we make sure that there's an appropriate deterrent in place? I agree that Derek Jones should be punished for his crime. What I would like to argue is that Derek Jones is not thinking as a child and he is mature enough to take on responsibilities of an adult. And Derek Jones is going to remorse that he concluded that he was sorry for what he had done. He realized later, but not at that moment, what he had done and how it affected him and how he was wrong. This is not uh, a global issue. This is what the people of our country have decided that they deem necessary. The Supreme Court, the federal government, they are to allow states to do as they wish as long as it adheres to the United States Constitution, which in this case it does not. In listening to the students, the first thought that occurred to me was, these first year law students are really great. I had not focused on the fact they're high school students. I mean, I've seen the level of excellence uh, displayed today that you don't normally see in high school students. When I think about how it was them that they overcame their nerves, they overcame um, so many barriers on their own. It was their practice, it was their parents, and it's, it's almost impossible to ever take credit for that. You almost feel happy you have anything to do with it, and so the word humble seems appropriate. Justice Marshall would be delighted to learn that all of this is being done in our schools, and I know he would want this to be practiced throughout the cities and different states. Get our students interested. Through the Marshall Brennan program, we can really make a difference in high school students' ability to really grasp and be involved with our democracy. In the district alone, we serve almost 500 students every year. To me, just as important as the fact that we are training young lawyers to care about their communities and to care about how their education empowers them to go out and make a difference in the community. Students are also led by the Marshall Brennan Fellows to participate in the program, essay competition, poetry competition, and arts competition, all dealing with constitutional themes. Free to express yourself with any combination of arts not seen before. Free! Free to speak where your feet might stop. Free! Free to gather your children in place to the thousand skies above. Free! You are set free with the First Amendment right. <laughs> Because Mr. Carver, she dedicated to teaching us whatever she knows. It's kind of when they have to go home and read out papers, and they may not have to, but you know, they do it anyway. I want to give a shout out and congratulate the school best teachers, not in this program, but in the world of love. I want y'all to feel part of my life. 
they made us look at a different point of views that we needed to look and change our views and how to seek constitutional law, our members, and how we can use our rights to protect ourselves in the streets and anywhere we go. Because of them, we now can go to school and we can tell our teachers when they're doing something wrong. So, we want to thank you for that.